Welcome, everybody, to Dublin Tech Talks. We have Anthony Quigley with us in the studio today. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you very much. Uh, Anthony Glad is a, you. your serial entrepreneur at this stage, um, focusing on EdTech and, uh, and SaaS founding certain such businesses, the Code Institute, Corporate Governance Institute, UX Design Institute. Uh, we'll talk about your new venture as well today. Uh, so the vi- actually, great to meet you finally in person. Mm, uh, we've yeah, spoke many times yeah, on the phone right. and on video. So yeah. excited to hear we're going to talk about your journey, your business, why you focused on, on SaaS education or just availability of, of online education. And we'll go from there. So Anthony, yep. do you want to give us a bit of a background about yourself and sure. how you got to where you are today? Okay. Uh, yeah, no problem. By the, uh, by the way, just in case uh, Coleman Walsh is listening, who is the founder <laughs> of uh, UX Design Institute, I better put the, the, the <laughs> put it straight and say I'm I'm an investor and I'm a shareholder, but I'm I'm not the founder. Okay, but I I do help out Coleman from time to time. He'd be delighted to hear. Um, so I won't point him at that point at that part. So how did I get here, Jeannie Mackers? Uh, that's and it. And we've only twenty minutes. And we've so. only and we've only <laughs> we'll twenty minutes. So so we better start yesterday. <laughs> I know, I, I suppose I bumped into education in Microsoft. I was working at Microsoft and Microsoft has a, uh, you know, a fairly major education program because obviously they want all micro, everyone who, who is an engineer out there, software engineer, to be Microsoft mm. uh, accredited. So I started with that. Uh, but the big, uh, the big, I suppose, leap forward uh, for me was Digital Marketing Institute. So along with a guy called uh, Ian Dodson, we founded Digital Marketing Institute and we just jumped on. We happened to bump into a wave. Um, People wanted to understand what it means to, how do you get to the top of Google? How do you advertise on Facebook? What's this Google Analytics stuff? Mm. You know, all of that. Uh, And in fact, Facebook was only beginning. Uh, Twitter wasn't even founded. Mm. Um, And we just jumped on this is this thing called digital marketing. There was lots of marketing courses out there. We we jumped on this thing called digital marketing, and uh, fortunately, it was a it was a wave, and we rode that wave, and uh, it was very successful. Um, and one of the things that we did, by the way, as as you mentioned before, we went on air, uh, is we moved from classroom based to online based, mm. um, and that was a that was a major. Uh, we strapped on our trousers <laughs> because we switched off classroom. Mm-hmm. We were going to do, I, it's around about 2012, 13. Um, myself and Ian came in after Christmas and said, look, this classroom stuff is killing us. There's yeah. so much admin. The costs are huge. Getting lectures into the room. You know, because we were now running courses in London, uh, Dublin, Belfast, Cork, Galway, Manchester, Holland, I think as well. And we were doing some in in Sweden but Mm. you know and so the admin and the cost was huge and it wasn't hugely profitable so we switched Um, and uh, it was funny you know getting all the salespeople who previously were selling the advantages of being in the classroom to suddenly oh, well, <laughs> want to go into a classroom. Yeah. The pivot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't, unbelievable. Those imagine, classrooms are imagine terrible. Imagine going into a classroom on a dark evening in November and you have to get to a smelly hotel, you know. <laughs> so so we switched over and it was really, really successful. Um, and obviously we grew tremendously. So, um, you know, we, drew, we were growing at 50, 60, 70% per annum uh, for about eight years, I'd say. Yeah. Um, There's a business logic there, right, in terms of operational efficiency, but mm. there's an access issue from a, from the learner's perspective as well, right? I mean, it- well, it's, it's one of the things that, that's happened and it was accelerated with the pandemic is this move away from the classroom. Yeah. Um, and we fortunately, you know, whatever, whatever company it is, fortunately have the skills to be able to deliver this. Mm. And it's really interesting. Both my sons were in, in college during uh, the pandemic and the, the quality of the delivery left a lot to be desired. Really, yeah. And it was, mm. it, it, it was be, not because they wouldn't be able to, it was because they'd never been trained. Yeah. They'd never had to. This was something they had to jump into. Mm. Now they're getting much, much better. Yeah. Um, but there still is a, uh, a throwback to classroom, um, certainly in universities. And one of the things we found in, in Digital Marketing Institute was that we were getting a lot of marketing graduates coming to us to learn digital mm. straight after college. Yeah, straight after crazy. college. So, so yeah. four years in college and then they came to us, mm. which was absolutely, as you say, crazy. Yeah. They were learning about AdWords and Google and what have you. Um, and so 
From there, by the way, we went and bundled our products and sold them into universities. Mm. Not in Ireland. Ireland's universities are very closed. Yeah. But in, in the States, there's lots and lots of universities and Canada are really open. Australia is really open. And there are certain parts of Europe that are really open. Universities will take a, a, a a course mm. that somebody else has built and plug it into theirs because they know they know they just don't have the skills internally to mm. start building a course. Like and, in, in 01, I, I did marketing and mm. they were still talking about marketing mix and that was like the majority of the, te- like of your exams was about yeah. traditional marketing methods yeah. and you left in 01 going, don't yeah. anything about digital. In 01, yeah. actually we were hiring people in, I had a conference company, I'd say about 2017 we hired somebody from some US uh, university graduate and she said her main lecturer was radio advertising. Yeah. He knew radio mm. advertising. So if you think about it, look, yeah. you know, it's, it's yes, it is the fault of the universities, it's not the fault. But what they do is they, they hire in people and they put them on till pension. Mm. And what happens is if you're if your knowledge is stuck in television advertising, yeah. well, that's what you're going to teach. Of course, yeah. You don't know how Google works. You don't know about yeah. the budgeting of Google or, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or how, how the ads work. You know, listen, <laughs> I was in an event in November, I think it was, and the guy was talking about, to, you know, we were at a, a, an entrepreneur event and one of the leaders was talking about the fact that he never sees this company in the papers and hears them on the news and, mm. <laughs> you know, the owner, the founder just turned around and said, why would you? Yeah. We don't, you know, that's not our that's audience. Not where we are, yeah. That's not, a, we're on Insta. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. it. We, they were on Insta, so. As, as for any entrepreneur though, mm. you fit on something there and I've heard you speak about it before, that, that kind of packaging and partnership consideration is really important, right? It's, I mean, that can be the catalyst for, for big growth. Is that a universal thing? I mean, if people don't have a plan for that, if they're, you know, an early stage company in whatever area. Is that something that you would recommend they really make some? If you can figure out uh, how to partner, because mm. partnerships come in, in vast different ways, mm-hmm. shapes and forms. Um, so, you know, in my experience in Digital Marketing Institute, we went with training providers. So, you know, somebody who's selling Microsoft training or Cisco training or whatever. And we went along with our little box. Mm. And we said, in this box is digital marketing training. Why don't you sell it and see how you get on? Then you put you, put this on your portfolio. You can sell it to all your customers. Mm. And hey, bingo, that yeah. worked. And that worked around the globe. Mm-hmm. However, with Code Institute, uh, we have a different partner model. And we go through certification organizations who then sell into universities. And so those guys deliver through universities across the UK. Uh, we sell into Germany through government funding. Mm. And so there's there's a whole range. Like in, in, in Corporate Governance Institute, we're only figuring out what kind of partners are they? Are yeah. they big organizations who just have lots of directors on their books? Mm. Or are they other training companies? And it's going to be a mix. And over the course of the next few years, we'll figure that out. Mm. But we're, we're, we're working pretty fast at doing that. We have about a dozen already. And some will work out and some will not. Yeah, yeah. The Code Institute mm. probably is the fundamental, like you look at educational systems mm. and, and mm. where it should be going and you, know, you can get a certification in three months, it's full time, mm. you know, it's it's difficult, it's not handed out. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know, courses in, in colleges are still fundamentally teaching mm. a mm. C-sharp Java based course that they have architecture, they have, you know, it takes forever to get to the point where you can be quicker and faster getting to market. With, the the with diversity like that. piece is interesting because it's, yeah, what has changed is it doesn't matter. So whatever the path you've chosen, people are now open to. It. And I think that, you know, certainly in the in the business world, we are starting to see people relax and say, look, you know, that's just as good as that. It's yeah. about your skills and what you can bring to the yeah. to the table. I mean, the whole education policy piece from in terms of what we're teaching, how we're teaching is a different conversation. But I think do you, was that also that change is that part of the success, do you think? Well, I I think what what I do is I'm in the vocational business. Mm. I'm not in the on the the sub you know the undergraduate business. Yeah. Uh, so most of my customers are they they're either postgraduate or or they're re learning something else or changing changing careers and so on. Um. So what people want is to equip themselves as quickly as possible, mm. in the best way as possible. Some look for certification and some don't look for certification. But if you're certified, it just gives you that extra bit of mm. uh, kudos, I suppose. Um, and so 
what we're doing is we're giving not just the basics, but we're giving all the tools or as many tools as possible to somebody to either step into the boardroom mm. or to apply sustainability in the in the workplace or to get a job with Google or whoever. Yeah. So, you know, the Code Institute, for instance, you know, we're going to we're going to uh, deliver out to the market. If that's what, you know, yeah. if that's what we, we want to call it, we deliver products and the products are people who have skills in, in software development. We're going to deliver maybe a thousand this year, maybe wow. more, maybe yeah. 1200. And that's a phenomenal rate. Yeah. yeah. And it's only a tip of the iceberg because there's, the, you know, the demand is just so huge across mm. Europe. And most of our business is, is in Europe. You know, most of our business, certainly if your code is, would be uh, Holland, Sweden, UK, Ireland, Germany, mm. and then tapping into, into Italy and so on. But essentially, their demand is huge. And even though there's a, you know, there's, there has been a shift in, in tech over the last six to nine months, and there's been a downturn, and we saw yesterday that PayPal are now going to shed some jobs, you know, Facebook has or Meta, mm. uh, Google has and so on. But every company needs tech. Yeah. Every company needs some kind of uh, digital awareness and digital infrastructure. So there's jobs for everyone at this stage. And the people who are coming out of Google and Meta and so on will find jobs elsewhere. Yeah. You know, they're they're highly skilled. Yeah. So as you say, the the employers are looking at people in the whole mm. as opposed to can you code a piece of, yeah. of uh, you know, C++ but, or whatever. Yeah. Is. Co coding is going to come less, I'll shit myself for listen back at this in a year or two, but <laughs> there, there are other alternatives now for like coders, there's low code, no code, we, we, we talked about. And so it's now about how you adapt your workforce into that new environment. And, and obviously reskilling is really important. It is. And, and you're, no, you're absolutely right about the, uh, the coding, by the way. So in, in certainly corporate governance and in sustainability uh, and other companies that I'm involved with, what, what you're finding is that it's actually a understanding tech and understanding yeah. API sets and making sure that when somebody hits the website that they can pay and mm. that's recognized in HubSpot, which automatically triggers an invoice, which automatically asks for the payment, grabs the payment, puts it in the bank, makes sure that the invoice is recognized as paid, <laughs> you know, and the accounts, yeah. the accounts work. And how do we get, a, get, you know, for instance, let's say somebody signs up to uh, a sustainability course. So, how do we recognize the payment, put them onto the learning management system immediately without them having to type in more mm. passwords and mm. rename this and that and the other? And then once they've done that, how do we get them onto the exam system, which is a different system, yeah, completely smoothly and, and mm. you know, that they don't know they're moving from from platform to platform. And then once they've done the exam, mm. let's give them the uh, let's give them the, the certificate. Mm. And that's on a different platform as well. So we're moving between platforms and it's it's an understanding of yeah. that kind of, how does all that work? Mm. And do I have a big, bigger picture of that is is where a lot of this is going. Yeah. Yeah. So just what mm. with the work that you're doing right now, mm. what attracted you to the, the, uh, the, the glow of corporate governance? <laughs> The glow of corporate governance, the exciting, <laughs> the world, exciting world, the exciting world of corporate governance. <laughs> Nobody else is there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, it's, it's really interesting. I met a guy called David Duffy, mm -hmm. who's my business partner in that. And we met during uh, lockdown, actually, on the 23rd of March, 2020. So we didn't meet for about 10 or 11 months. Wow, yeah. Um, we were doing all this online. And uh, I was introduced by, by somebody else, a mutual friend. And he said, look, I've tried this before mm. and it didn't go particularly well. Uh, I think there's a demand for this. There are some players out there. They're very expensive. They don't seem to be that good. Mm. Um, and so I took maybe a month or two. We researched it. Uh, we went into the detail. We realized this is actually a billion dollar market. Mm. And then we went, you know, six months later, where now it's a multi-billion dollar market. Yeah. Uh, and the players are not very good. Mm. And none of them were thinking globally. None of them were outside the classroom. Mm. So you've got a lot of domestic players. So in in Australia, there's some good players. Mm. In Canada, there's some good players. In the UK, there's some good players. But there's nobody fully online uh, with a global view. So we just took a global view, went straight online. We have customers in 30 countries. Mm. Uh, we're three years old. We're growing at a rate of 120% per year. And we'll continue to do that for the next few years. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> the the glow of corporate governance, I wouldn't call it a glow. <laughs> Listen, it's the same. Yeah. It's a very similar model. No, I get it. You yeah. know, mm. if you're selling knitting or you're selling, you know, uh, 
gardening uh, training or software mm. or sustainability. It's a similar process in order to get to the right market. Yeah. It's all about getting the product market fit. Mm. That, that's, that, that's, that's that that came up that only one half of 1% of board members yeah. are certified. I mean, yeah. that's one of those ones where you think, oh, they've missed They've missed, they've missed a, they've missed a few numbers there. there. Yeah, I couldn't believe yeah, that, and yeah. I've got some it, some questions around that. But like, I mean, that's the problem you're trying to solve, right? Yes, essentially. Yeah. But like, the question then would go like, well, on what basis are people appointed? Are are people appointed, you know, by reputation or the fact yeah. that okay, they've had a successful career, but you know, what, what how is that going to benefit? Bar their yeah. own experience and not structured kind of okay. So let me try and answer that by going back to Digital Marketing. Digital Marketing Institute was founded on this wave, as I said, Mm -hmm. and everybody suddenly needed, companies needed to find out what is this digital because I've got a guy in the corner talking about Twitter (laughs) and he's he's our voice. Now, what they didn't realise is he was the only voice out to the outside world from Mm -hmm. that company. That Mm -hmm. that was wrong. So things have changed, but we rode that wave. So let's look at governance. Mm -hmm. And governance is being majorly affected by directors doing exactly what they shouldn't be doing mm. from time to time. Mm-hmm. So you take, I don't know, FedEx. Is it FedEx? No, no, no. Wells Fargo. Sorry. FedEx, cross, cross. Apologies, FedEx. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Scrap. it was, well, Wells Fargo made a complete hames of, of basically. Two is good, ten is better, eight is better or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they, there are lots and lots of cases of big companies and small companies doing bad governance mm. things and activities and getting into trouble. And now fines are starting yeah. to, mm-hmm. to flow. So there is a small wave happening. Um, and then also the customers and cost- care more. All the stakeholders. Yeah. So if you're going to, in fact, I'll tell you what it is. Kids are coming in yeah. to, when they're looking for a job, yeah. in the interview, mm. they'll ask about, oh, certainly they'll ask about what's your uh, approach to climate change and mm-hmm. sustainability. Uh, and now they're asking, what, what? tell me about your ESG policies. Mm. And some of them, the, sh- the smarter and sharper ones, are saying, well, tell me about how the board works. Tell me about your governance. Mm. What happens if, who are your investors, and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. And it's really, really important. It's becoming more important. So there is a bit more focus mm-hmm. on that, correctly so, for all the wrong reasons. And mm-hmm. all I'm doing is re- realizing and recognizing those reasons and jumping aboard and saying, we can help. Yeah. And it, by the way, you know, what I do like about education in general is it is a positive, it leaves a positive footprint. Mm. It, and it doesn't matter in what sector, whether mm-hmm. it's corporate governance, what we're doing is we're helping companies improve the way they deal with their customers, their stakeholders, the society. You know, should 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 companies think about um about how they treat their their own customers, how they treat their staff. And we're improving that, I think, Mm -hmm. by educating those board members. If you move to coding, we're improving the individual's ability to uh, get a job, improve themselves. You know, there's 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 brilliant examples in in Code Institute of there was one guy who made chicken sandwiches. He made chicken sandwiches. He went to his aunt and he, uh, he, or his his granny was his aunt. Anyway, he borrowed the money to go on this course he now works in San Francisco for Intercom and he's been promoted three or four times. Mm. And he's absolutely delighted with himself. Mm. You know, so so there are some great examples yeah. of positive, leaving positive footprints. Absolutely. Constantly. Yeah. I, in fact, with Digital Market, there was a guy, I was walking down actually at, this, at Dub- <laughs> Dublin Street a few months ago and a guy what, straight, came straight across the road to me and I thought, oh, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in big trouble now. <laughs> Whatever I've done, I mean, he says, are you Anthony Quigley? I said, yes, yes, please don't hit me. <laughs> Take it. Says, no, he put out his hand, he shook my hand, he says, thank you so much. And I said, why? He says, I went on digital marketing course. I did the postgrad. I did the first course. Then I did the postgrad. I now employ 12 people Amazing. in a digital agency. Yeah, and brilliant. you know, listen, education leaves a fo- positive footprint. Yeah. That's, that's one of the lovely things about education. Mm. Now, you couldn't necessarily say that if I was in, I don't know, oil or property or finance. Microsoft. It's not always, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, it, all companies do not always yeah. leave a positive footprint. Yeah, but I for think sure. in general, education does. But I think they're all, companies are being held accountable mm. for the footprint mm. they leave now in Absolutely. a way that they haven't before, which, Correct. you know, is, is a catalyst for change. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's, you know, one of the one of the, the extensions of what we did in, in Corporate Governance Institute is we introduced an ESG yeah. for directors and, and senior leaders uh, course. And that's 
phenomenal, po- phenomenally popular, by the mm. way. It's just, it's, it's taken off because of exactly what you're saying yeah. is companies are now thinking about and concerned with how their footprint is, whether it's global footprint or mm. the footprint of, of, of their staff or their, you know, the footprint on society. You know, if you're a, if you're a milk producing company in, in the Midlands, then, you know, how does that affect the people around you and, and the, the waters around mm-hmm. you and, you know, the, 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 what's the supply chain all the way through to mm-hmm. the farmer who's supplying the milk and how is he feeding his animals and so on yeah. and so forth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots to think about. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's, it's, like, it's, you think of like corporate governance, you, you, you just naturally think like all the, that's sorted now. Like we all saw the, the Enrons and, and so on and so yeah. on. Then you just look at the, what you call the guy in America, the, the, the crypto guy that, oh yeah, yeah, threw yeah. out billions and it's just, well, like it's, and that's yeah. this, that's the last six weeks. I yeah. love, I, th- I heard you yeah. say somewhere that was it, um, white stale, oh uh, yeah, yeah, frail, yeah. like, and, and that is like, it's challenging. What was your, does your board represent, you know, broadly your, the demographic of your customer, the things you want to make an impact on and, you know, what's the diversity on your board beyond you know, the, the pillars 20%, that expect, I think that's like, you know? I presume you're asking about one's board as opposed to my board. Yeah, yeah. no, sorry, one's uh, board, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's, yeah, it yeah. shouldn't just be male, female, ethnicity, you know, should it should be background, influence, age, mm. everything. Like, I mean, should should people be thinking more broadly about yeah, the people tra- they put around yeah, them? Yeah, so you traditionally see boards as, say, non-execs would be ex-industry yeah. type people that are who, yeah, who on have six a, different who, boards and just and have a big a role pay, to play. Yeah. Don't get me wrong; we'll bring a lot to the table, yeah. but there will be gaps in terms of these new yeah. things that people yeah. need to be more it's, aware it's, of. Especially as you said, Anthony, about employees are coming into a business now and going, "What is that?" And if yes. they don't represent, if the board and non-execs don't really represent yeah. the day to day, yeah, how attractive is that to a business? So it's it's and I, I and I use this phrase: pale, stale, male. Quite and often, frail. Quite often frail. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, why is that? Yeah. It's because it's traditionally, and I mean last 50 yeah. to 100 years, um, somebody who's been in a bank and worked in a bank for 40 years, what skills do they have in, you know, in helping a board who are, milk? let's go back to the milk, you know, milk, a milk producer. Mm. There's no real skills, but they've been, they've been the bank manager in the, in the mm. small town forever. So therefore they must know lots. That's not true. And yeah. people are being found out for not yeah. being true. Mm. So, so what, how do you build a representative board? Mm. Well, you can't have diversity in thinking unless you have diversity in people. Yeah. So it definitely, you, you've got to balance that diversity of people with the kind of business that you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's probably no point in having, if you're a gym owner and you're attracting 20 somethings, having a bunch of men mm. who look like me and who, you know, are white, stale, what did I say? Pale, stale and frail, frail. <laughs> uh, you know, deciding what machines yeah. go in mm-hmm. and, and the, the, the governance of that, of that gymnasium. Mm. Um, so you have to, you have to prepare your board for the outcomes that you want mm. but at the same time recognizing actually there's a whole bunch of inputs that we need to consider as mm. well so does that mean bring diversity bring you know uh, people of color bring women we're only at the beginning of this yeah. and the interesting thing is it is being implemented or sorry mandated mm. yeah. in some countries across the globe um, I think in the UK they've just mandated 40% of boards have to be uh, female mm. by I think it's next year um, so, you know, that's happening and that will definitely bring uh, different types of thinking. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it, it, and that's so important to have other voices yeah. coming in. And that's why we have, for instance, on all my companies, we have um, a board of advisors. Mm. And so the board of advisors is not to make us look good. What it is, is to, to beat us down <laughs> and, and say, no, 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 you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. You're not thinking about, you know, these things these aspects mm. of the business and you need to start thinking about that because otherwise you're going to remain in a in a particular lane and stay in that lane now mm. that's good in some ta- in some cases by the way you know in terms of marketing and sales and so on we are very niche you know corporate governance is pre- a pretty niche sport you know mm. it's a speciality sport um <laughs> so you know we we know we don't want to advertise to people who are 21 yeah and we don't want to advertise to people who are 83 mm. and we don't want to advertise to people who just don't fit the bill. Mm. So we need to figure out 
you know, how do we, who do we advertise to? Well, mm. we advertise to the people who are at senior, senior leadership level and at board level. And we need to say certain things to them. Yeah. So if you're a senior leader and you're not on the board, well, here's how you can get on the board. Yeah. If you're on the board, uh, then we need to talk about certification. And mm. here's what you need to think about. Whether you're in a board in Botswana or in in Baltsbridge, mm, you know mm. the same questions have to be asked. The same questions around around um, you know finance and you know, how what how's pro, how do you read profit and loss account? Uh, um, what about the risk associated? And, and board members tend not that they they don't ask awkward questions because they mm. don't like to ask awkward questions. But you need to ask every once in a while. So. What's the risk register look like? Mm. Tell me about the risks that we have yeah. to this business. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and we need to, and all we need to do is tell people to, how to ask those questions, how to ask questions about finance, how to ask questions about staffing, how to ask questions about succession planning and so mm. on. So there's there's specific areas that we're just teaching people. It's funny, you talked, I heard you talk about your days in uh, IOL and that took me back. I worked in tech support for a, a US OEM uh, and we were on the help desk and we heard all sorts of crazy stories. Now, early days, people's first computer. <laughs> yeah. The things you think aren't real, like finding a mouse in a box and it's not yeah. an electronic device. Um, and I was going to say, you know, that it's been, I was thinking, God, the, the transformation in education mm. and everything. I was like, it's like overnight. And I went, oh no, it's 25, 26 yeah. years ago yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so thanks for the memories, but also, you know, when a, uh, not so thankful for the realisation <laughs> that I'm quite old now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, IOL was uh, Janie Mackers. 99, um, 99-ish. Yeah, uh, 98, 99. Mm. Uh, so what's that? 25, 6 25, years yeah. ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept me so, up on yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Counted the one. Yeah, yeah. Before, that, they, were, they were mad days. Yeah. Yeah. Before we finish, Shanti, next on your plan, what is the, the next kind of project you, you, you've, you're lining up? So we're working on uh, the Institute of Sustainability Studies. Um, we think there's a, in fact, we know we've done a ton of research and we know there's a, there's a bunch of um, opportunity in sustainability for businesses, for mm. SMEs. Yeah. So what's happening is, it's really interesting. So big companies, whether they're Bank of Ireland or, or Deutsche Bank or um, uh, Google, what they do is they go to the big four consultants yeah. and they say, here's lots of money. Tell me how to implement sustainability in ESG and make me a better company. Mm. Whereas you go down to sub 500 people in the company and, and they just don't have the funds to do that and they don't have the yeah. relationships and so on. So the question is, can we take those learnings from the big companies and bring them to the small companies? And that's exactly what we're doing. And um, so we're up and running. We have a, 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 a diploma in business sustainability and um, it the January cohort is filled, uh, February cohort is nearly filled and we're running one a month to start off with. Um, and we're just teaching people about how to get how to get their business sustainable. Mm. Um, we give them a bunch of templates, a bunch of tools, a bunch of um, uh, directives, uh, pra best practices, and so on. And we have industry for it's it's always industry people. Yeah. So mm. there are people who are doing this uh, day in day out, and they're coming in. They're explaining this is what we do in terms of I don't know recycling cups and switching off lights and you know saving the oil and not throwing the milk down the 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 river or whatever it, whatever it is you know but but it's real practical stuff yeah um and it's 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 a huge absolutely ginormous market and so what we're doing is we're carving a niche there's a bunch again look it's like uh, corporate governance there's a bunch of players in the market mm. most of them really interestingly are coming from university because mm. universities kind of have people on site yeah. and they have a bit of sustainability in their title or they know about sustainability but they're not practicing mm. yeah. so what we do is we take the practical aspects yeah. and deliver that out in a in a in a kind of uh consumable format and then what we do is we we're already um getting customers from the UK and so we'll be expanding pretty rapidly over the next while we we're just closing off an investment round um to allow us to really start growing but it sounds like that that's impactful it's you know stuff we can do today to make a difference rather than hey I now know all about it but I don't have a plan <laughs> yeah yeah you know? no 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 yeah. that's no, that's exactly what we're doing yeah. the message if you go onto the website the what the message is learn how to do this yeah. immediately and put together yeah. a plan and then implement the plan. And we'll take you on that journey. Sounds great. Best mm. luck with that. Thank you. 
Anthony Quigley, thank you very much for your time and joining us here in Tech Talks today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anthony. To both of you. See you. Talk to you soon. That was Anthony Quigley, um, CEO, founder of multiple edtech businesses and SaaS organizations. Uh, Anthony's a super engaging guy, um, very passionate about, you know, getting people to a better place through education and, and identifying niches in, in, in maybe traditional education, such as coding, uh, corporate governance, uh, sustainability. Um, he's, he's, he's very passionate about what he does and been very successful and, and somebody that, you know, will we'll see a lot more of his products come to market and um you know i think it's a um, it's a, the point there probably stuck with me most is that less than one percent of boards seem to be qualified um so there's there's certainly 99 percent of the market to be covered um if that is of interest to you uh, please subscribe to our youtube channel or to listen to our podcast subscribe to us on uh, spotify or apple or wherever you get your podcasts thanks <laughs>